Barbosa. I'm the founder of Rhode Island First Fatherhood Group. We're here in Newport, Rhode Island uh, to investigate a conference called the National Fatherhood Conference. They've been mess uh, meeting for 11 years, and this is the first time they've met in uh, Rhode Island that I know of. And we have done a little investigating, and we found that the people or uh, participants have spent uh, half a million dollars, at least a hundred and something thousand dollars, this weekend alone, I mean this week alone, on the conference. And we felt that it would be uh, curious for us to find out what are we getting for our money. Uh, they just on vacation. Uh, they, these conferences seem to be uh, for the benefit of the agencies and the people that work in them. But uh, when we sent a brother to go to get a job or to get some information from child support enforcement or any agencies, there's none in Rhode Island. So we're hoping that they can feed us the information of what they're doing at these conferences that helps fathers. Thank you. one this year. Uh, we're doing a shoot uh, up at the Black Memorial. It's one of the nation's only Black Memorial uh, that represents and uh, honors the 10% uh, of the soldiers that fought with George Washington. So we figured we'd come by here and find out what the conference was all about. Uh, today we have uh, John John. Director of the Nurturing Family Center of Massachusetts. And, and what, what exactly is that program? Um, well, my program, um, we engage fathers, and, and, and essentially what we do is we, um, I get referrals from uh, the Department of Children and Families, I get referrals from, from, from the, the courts, um, and I have a 13-week program that we use a curriculum called the Nurturing Fathers Curriculum, and essentially what we do is help fathers to broaden um, their understanding of what it means to be a father, in fact, what it means to be a man, and we try to, 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 to help fathers to become more responsible uh, to their children. All right, now, about the conference, mm -hmm. I, I, the, the, there was 300 some odd people here. Yes, indeed. And they all represent some kind of advocacy for fathers. Yes, indeed. My question, and what I've been asked continuously, is after almost 100 some odd thousand dollars is spent, mm -hmm. uh, does a penny help create any jobs or direct anybody, like, say, Say he wants to come mm -hmm. and get a job or a place to live or something. Is there any agency that you know of that will help? Uh, well, you know, there are certain agencies um, that do help to provide uh, employment opportunities, educational opportunities, housing opportunities um, in, in Massachusetts, and I'm sure in most states. Talk about the generic stuff. I'm yeah. saying in particular, because uh -huh. once you become a deadbeat dad, as they call them, mm -hmm. a non-custodial okay. parent, you know that most of your money that you make at your job is gone to the child support and the court system. What's left is not enough to live off. It's not enough to really go out and look for a job because you have to have a place to live, change your clothes, uh, eat and so forth, etc. And this is not working. Now we, we've done the data mm -hmm. and we've done the research and as part of part of this project we would like to know if this conference is helping in your opinion. What do you think? Well, you know, I, I can't speak to that on, on, on because there are people here from, from different agencies that, that work with fathers in different capacities. Um, I'm not sure what agencies that are represented here. I know DCF is represented here and other agencies from uh, around New England. In terms of creating jobs, um, I'm not sure that's the focus of this, of, of this conference. The focus of this conference is fatherhood engagement, right, to, to get fathers more engaged with their families and to have agencies engage fathers more readily. This is understood, but again, you cannot be a father mm -hmm. unemployed. You cannot be literally a man. I use a curriculum that's called the Nurturing Fathers Curriculum. Uh, it's a 13 week curriculum. And in that curriculum, we deal with many different issues around fathering. And cult the cultural aspect of it uh, is also that within the curriculum. I understand the, the, the importance of, of providing jobs for fathers to be able to support their children. But even before that, right, there are some things that some fathers, you know, need to learn about being a father, about being involved with their children, be, being involved with their families, right? Um, from my end, um, what we do, at, at the end of my program, I, I, I pass out an evaluation form. 
and I meet with each father individually, <clears throat> excuse me, and I find out what his service needs are. And then I try to refer him to, to, to the appropriate services. Um, I use a, uh, there's different agencies around Boston that I use. There are training programs that I refer fathers to. Um, a, lot of, a lot of referrals. A lot of referrals, yeah. exactly. But, uh, we don't provide jobs directly for fathers. Although, one of my fathers, um, and one of my graduates, I've been able to provide some type of employment for him doing fatherhood work. And he's doing well. And he's doing very well. You see, um, with the membership we have, uh -huh. they have been to the mill. Right. They've been to every program, every agency, homeless shelters, right. food kitchens, you name it. That's three quarters of the fathers in Rhode Island. I don't know how it is in Massachusetts okay. on numbers. Uh -huh. But that's three quarters of the men demasculated because the programs aren't providing what's really needed. And that's a source of income. Well, now, I know the agencies uh, get funded. Indeed. Grants. Uh, indeed. Especially CDG. I mean, they drain that. And when you go to, what I found is when you go to these agencies, mm -hmm. the only help they have for you is referral. Well, you know, there's another aspect to employment. And the other aspect is being employable. Well, you, know, you guys are employable. These guys aren't employable. Well, 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 that's my point, and that's why we refer them to training programs so they can learn a skill, mm -hmm. right? As you well know, um, many of our fathers are, un are undereducated, um, and in terms of opportunities, you know, historically we haven't had the greatest of opportunities. Um, so what we, tr what I try to do from, yeah, from my end, right, is to um, help a father to develop a, 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 a stronger sense of himself. And, and what it means to be a father again and, and a man. And then I point him to in, in the direction of certain opportunities that he can take advantage of. Thank you, Mr. I really appreciate your time. Thank you, sir. Have a good day. We might want to lambash the man. We might want to ask him a, a question that are you saying we can't? Can we or can we not ask what we want to ask? Because we're not trying to, we're not up here to make you happy. We're up here to do the politics of Rhode Island. All that represents, we're the only thing we got, except for child support enforcement. We're the only thing these fathers have that will give them a job and direct them right. And this is a fact. Do your homework. So I'm not trying to make them happy. I'm trying to ask these brothers, do you think we're spending that kind of money for these resorts and so forth, et cetera? Is it bringing anything back to the community that will help these fathers get jobs and get back in this game? Don't have to answer that question, right? There are 300 people here. There are 300 people here, right, that, that work with fathers. But what this does, right, the money you're talking about that, that, that puts this together, it brings these people together to discuss ideas, to exchange ideas, to network. So that when I get back home, right, I've met three or four yeah, people. Yeah, but we do this online in the 21st well, century. I've met three we or four people, right? Hello folks, this is Wayne Barboza, um, CapeVerdian.net, and this is uh, March 10th, 2011. Now we're here uh, expecting a phone call um, to uh, one of my uh, closest to Rhode Island uh, collaborators, my friend uh, Steve Gellum. Now, Steve Gellum is a uh, father that uh, I met him a few years back and uh, he became a part of the Party Ways Project, and now he's the uh, president of it. And uh, we hear the phones lighting up now. Uh, let's see if we can get him on the line. Hello, Steve. Hello, you there? Yeah, man. How you doing? I'm doing all right. Now, how's things in the jungle? Well, as good as things in the jungle can be. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the latest? Well, the latest is the same as we as we go through this. Uh, rocky road and trying to find what we've been looking for for four going on five years now has it been that long 
Yeah, so it's been that long. Wow. Yeah, we're, we're basically, because the listening audience have no clue on what we've been doing here in Rhode Island, um, maybe we should tell a story, you, you should give a little brief story of how you got involved, um, you know, uh, why you stuck four years into this project. I mean, um, I think that would give people an understanding why I called you, or you called me rather, and how come we're interviewing each other when we see each other on a weekly basis. Well, <laughs> well absolutely. Um, well, about four years ago, I had my first child. Uh, he's four years. He well, he's he'll be four in July. I had my first child, and I started having some problems with my son's mother. Uh, we couldn't talk. We were fighting a lot, and eventually, it led to me getting kicked out the house. And so, like a young man, I found another young lady, and the same thing actually happened again. And I had two kids. Oh, well, 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 hold up a minute. Why, why was you going to live with um, the mothers? Didn't you have your own place? Oh, well, at the time, my son's mother, I, when I met her, I had my own place. But I ended up moving in with her and taking care of her. Yeah, it seems to be a kind and of general rule. That, <laughs> and that, that in itself caused a lot of problems. Ah, uh, yeah, I agree. Because um, when you move into someone's house, you don't, your name's not on the lease. And if it's Section 8, that's even worse. And, you know, Section 8 and all these other things going on, the rent might be low, the phone bills might be low, but you end up paying all the bills, and when she gets upset, it's out the house. Okay, so you basically had to start over with the second woman, right? That's right. So okay. I What made you go to right away to another woman? Though? If you got a family already and you can't handle that, why would you, um, I mean, is, was it a lust? Or? No, it was... It was more of the option of being in the streets at one of these homeless shelters or going indoors somewhere where you can somewhat control that, but then again, you can't control that. So it was convenience. Yeah, it was a matter of convenience at that time. Um, as far as the convenience go, it, it's the lesser of two evils, I want to say. Uh -huh. And there was no uh, way you could afford to get yourself a room or apartment without it? Well, I was working at that time, but I didn't have the money there at that time to go pay six or seven or eight hundred dollars for an apartment at that point in time because now at that point in time, I'm still taking care of my son and I'm still helping her pay her bills as well because she wasn't working. She stopped working when she was three months pregnant. She stopped working. <laughs> Okay, so now you got this new family, and you have no family. I'm sure the courts came in the picture, right? Oh yeah. All right, well, let's let's get into that. Well, um, shortly after the time, uh, shortly after the time of my daughter being born, I say, three or four months after she was born, then the courts got involved because now I have two children, and and now they're saying I need to pay the court. But I'm saying to myself, why pay the court when I'm taking care of the kids right now? It's me. The mothers are not really asking for anything, but the courts got involved because there was a vengeful notion behind it. One's mother told her, put him on child support. He's not there with you. <laughs> the other mother tells her, put, her on, put him on child support. He might leave you. So they both bump heads, always. All right, so how do you handle that child support thing? Oh, man. Handling child support, um, I can't even give a, a comparison right now because child support is is basically debt court. It's not, they're not really worried about you and your children, so you're not really handling anything as far as child support is concerned. You're handling what I owe to the state of Rhode Island is concerned. So that kind of consumes... Uh Yes. Any any parenting that you're trying to do. Yes. Now you're figuring, they're saying, we basically want you to give up $200 every week for both your children. Give us $200. Well, what are you making every week? Uh, at that time, I was making maybe four or $500. Okay, so you had a couple hundred to live off. Yeah, yourself. I had a couple hundred to live off. Mm -hmm. But... Again, everybody wasn't living the same lifestyle I had. I had the same kind of job I had, so 
they're taxing me with $200 and I'm paying $200 every week but I'm going broke also because I still got to take care of myself and pay my rent I got to eat I got to there's numerous amounts of things that I have to do that I'm basically paying myself out of my pocket for and there's no help there but what the state is providing to both mothers at that time. So you can't really go to the state because there'd be a conflict of interest. Yes, yeah, so it'd be a okay, big so conflict of interest. Where does a father go or a man go when he gets in a jam like that? Or does, is there, have you tried going places? Like, you got all these agencies. Through my search, through, through my search, through my research, I've been to numerous amount of agencies. Um, you're talking about Network Rhode Island where they're supposed to have a fatherhood program, but their fatherhood program is you sit at a computer and you look for a job. <laughs> now, how okay. is that a program? What is that teaching anybody? Okay, well, any other places if that doesn't work? Um, uh, Network Rhode Island, I've, um, well, I've been everywhere, to be honest. Network Rhode Island. Uh, N name the program. Um, Rhode Island After School Alliance. Uh, I've been there. And it's the same deal. No, it's just name all the agencies you've been to for help. Oh, the of course City Hall, our last mayor Cicilline, um, Providence After School Alliance, the Providence School System, uh, the Amos House, um, and a couple other people. Uh, Okay, too numerous to mention, or you just it's, lost, it's a long lost, list. lost your memory. It's a long okay, list. Okay, right I can now. attest to. I can attest to. I've sent you to every agency that I can think of to uh, actually pull out the book and the directories of services, and there are none for me. Uh, that's what I found. Yeah, there are none. Right. Now, see, that's where we have a problem because nineteen. No, excuse me, in twenty, two thousand and one. In September, after 9/11, I was contracted to do a fatherhood program with a agency called um, Job Link. <coughs> These people um, wanted me to put a fatherhood program together, and they were working with the uh, courts and child support enforcement. So every week, uh, uh, every three weeks, they would send me 15 guys that couldn't find jobs and were about to get locked up. Now. Um, the prob the the Providence uh, school system and, and the other places uh, monitored this program. It's all documented, and it got an eighty five percent success rate. Now this went on for a couple of weeks, a couple of uh, terms, and they shut the program down. So when you went to uh, child support enforcement and asked for that fatherhood initiative uh, uh, program that they're supposed to have to help you get a job, they they denied they ever had a program. Isn't that right? Well, they did a couple of things. They denied there was a program that ever that ever existed. Um, they also um, sent a couple of Capitol Police over there to monitor me as I was asking about where this program was put because it was through child support enforcement and um, the district court downtown there. I'm um, excuse me, child support court downtown there. It was worked out between them, so where would it have possibly gone? And they have no idea, but yet, oh, but yet, they have no idea about fatherhood, but they go to a fatherhood conference. Yeah, I was with you. Uh, they had that conference up in Newport, Rhode Island. What was that a couple of years ago? Uh, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, and we, we looked into it. We found out that uh, they spent like a half a million dollars that uh, two days or three days. On three days, yeah. And it was at a luxury hotel, and one of the most luxurious hotels up there in the port. And uh, they were supposed to be doing uh, collaborating to help fathers out, but they didn't want to pay for your bus fare or, or bring you along with the, That's right. the, the two women that run the child support in Providence. That's right. And women <coughs> ran the child support. And women ran these supposed programs that are not in existence that went up to the fatherhood conference and wanted to make fathers who didn't have money or transportation or so on and so forth pay for transportation. Yeah, how was they going to go from Newport, I mean from uh, Providence, Rhode Island to Newport with no money and no job? Exactly. But they, they cost, uh, how much was it to cost for each 
person because we was going to pay to go there. Oh, $200 a person. Right, now, and that, that didn't count for the food, did it? The, it didn't count for the food. The food was um, $10 a day. And that's three days. That's three days. And we went down there, I think out of our pocket, we had about $100, $200 tops. We yep. had great. And we went to a hotel not too far from there. It was just as nice. Well, not as nice, but it was clean. And it, was, it wasn't a dive. And uh, we went to the Black Patriot Memorial near there and stopped by the motel and got an interview. 